Hi, this is Ben from Barsack Custom Guitars, and today we're going to be taking a look at the Tom DeLonge style ES333 build uh, that I did using a uh, 335 style guitar kit from the fretwire.com. So one of the main differences between a Tom DeLonge style ES333 and a standard 335 is that the 335 has extra holes for the additional volume and tone knobs, the three-way switch, and of course the neck pickup. I started out by filling the extra control holes with 3 8 and half inch flathead hole plugs from the hardware store and then filling in the seams with wood filler. Then for the neck pickup route, I took a piece of 2 inch by 3 quarter inch maple, cut it to the right size and shape, uh, and glued it into the neck cavity on top of the neck tenon after I set the neck into the guitar and then I also filled it with wood filler so you don't see any of the seams. Uh, just like Tom's guitar, this has a single dirty fingers humbucker with a single 500k volume control. Uh, now this guitar has the standard 335 style construction which uses a maple poplar maple ply and a maple center block. This particular guitar has a maple neck where traditionally 335s have a mahogany neck. It has a rosewood fretboard but it looks more like ebony after I applied some fretboard oil. I used a Graftech Tusk XL nut like I do on all my builds and to top it off I used Diodario trim lock tuners which so far I'm very happy with. So there was a good amount of woodworking to take this from a regular 335 style guitar in, and make it into a Tom DeLonge style ES333. Uh, we talked about all the work that was done on the front, but on the back um, I also reshaped this uh, neck joint here. Uh, this originally had a more of like a Les Paul style uh, neck joint where it would just it came across here like there was binding and there was like a lip that came across here but that's not how actual 335s or 333s are so I ended up cutting another piece of uh, maple the same maple that I used to fill in the neck cavity um, and I just shaped it to the the right size and shape and uh, glued it on there clamped it on there good let it sit overnight and then uh, just shaped it with uh, sandpaper and a little bit of uh, wood filler again so you don't see any of the seams and uh, I'm super happy with the, the way it came out. It's extremely comfortable up here. Um, I don't really play up in this register, but it's just really comfortable to hold uh, in your hand, uh, you know, up at this, this area right here. Um, and then on the back, as you already saw, uh, we have the AVA logo. Um, the, this is a vinyl decal that's underneath the clear coat. Uh, same thing goes for the pinstripe. The pinstripe also a vinyl decal under the clear coat, as well as the headstock logo it is up a vinyl decal under the clear coat. Uh, I did that using a Cricut machine. Uh, if you're not really sure what that is, it's a basically a cutter where you can cut all different kinds of material, but um, I used it for cutting vinyl decal and it came in super handy. I highly recommend it for these, this, this sort of work. Um, and then I used uh, for the paint a Rust-Oleum American Accents uh, 2X uh, Gloss White. I've used it in the past on other projects and I really love the way it came out, especially on this guitar. And then I used uh, Spray Max uh, 2K High Gloss Clear, which is the, uh, the catalyzed you know, two-part uh, clear coat, and it came out awesome. Um, just some other highlights, uh, you know, this has Dunlop dual action uh, strap locks on it. I put those on all my guitars. Um, and like I talked about earlier, I used the Diodario trim lock uh, tuners which I thought was a little gimmicky at first when I, when I was looking at them, but um, the cutting action works nice. So if you don't know what those are, uh, it's a locking tuner that actually trims off the excess string when you string it through. So you put the string through the tuning peg, lock it down, and then as you tune it up, it, the tuner automatically cuts off the extra string. Um, and it, I can tell you firsthand, it works awesome, and I'm glad I went with these tuners. Uh, I also think like the black and the chrome kind of goes well with the theme of this guitar because the, the, uh, the adjustments knob here and also these actual tuning posts are black and then the rest of the tuner is chrome. So I thought that was just a nice fit for this guitar. Overall, I'm super happy with the way it came out. All right, so let's hear some tones. So for the demo, I'm going to be recording the guitar direct into my uh, Line 6 Pod Go, which is on the floor, and then direct via USB into my MacBook Pro and recording into GarageBand. There'll be no post-processing. Everything is, you'll hear is straight from the Pod Go. Uh, as far as amp models, the entire demo will be recorded using a Vox AC30 style amp. Uh, for the overdriven tones, that model will be boosted by a Klon style boost, again, all in the Pod Go. 
and then there'll also be some other reverb and delay uh, settings going on, which I'm sure you'll 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 hear. So uh, let's see how it sounds. Alright, so there you have it. Uh, so this guitar is going to be for my own personal collection, uh, which is why I used a certain headstock, because it is not for sale. But uh, if you do want a guitar that's like this, uh, you can shoot me an email, uh, bursackcustomguitars at gmail.com. The email will be posted in the description of this video as well. And we can always just chat about it and uh, you know go over some options and things like that. Or if you're interested in anything else, of course, uh, you know we, we do anything. So you can always work something out there. But uh, thanks so much for watching. Be sure to like, subscribe, and comment, and hit that bell notification so you'll be notified when we post new content. And also be sure to follow us on Instagram. Uh, all the links are in the description below. Thanks for watching.